good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today... I am showing you a wonderful deck with which Alex Hill just got third place at the Costa Mesa Regional Championship. It's Glaceon Barbarical. Huge shout out to Limitless TCG who did share the deck list. I will be showing you the full deck list at the end of the video. But for now, it's time to talk about the, what this deck is and what this deck does. And this deck essentially starts life as a quad Glaceon deck. You roll with Glaceon GX using Freezing Gaze to stop your opponent having any abilities on their EXs and GXs. Now, this partly means that there's no Zoroark GX, which is obviously huge. And it means that they can't have stuff like Volcanion EXs Steam Up. But the other thing is, they can't use Tapu Lele. Now, some of you who might be thinking, yeah, Ross, but they're going to get a turn or two to use Tapu Lele before you evolve up to Glaceon and get it in the active. Well, no, not necessarily because of the energy evolution Eevee. You attach a water energy to Eevee and it evolves straight away into a Glaceon or a Vaporeon, but that's not the whole point of this video. So if you can get your Glaceon into the active turn one, then you can stop your opponent ever having access to their abilities on EX and GX Pokemon. Now, maybe your opponent plays something like an escape rope to move you out of the active, but that's very unlikely. A lot of decks are playing Guzma at the moment. Brilliant. You get access to your abilities, but you've already used your one supporter for the turn. I personally am okay with that. And then once you've done that, you just chill. Sit there using Frost Bullet, 90 to the active, 30 to the bench, 90 to the active, 30 to the bench. Sounds a lot like Darkrai's Night Spear, because it is. But honestly, it's not as good as Night Spear used to be. It's just the fact that you're turning off abilities, giving you more time to get that damage around. And then, of course, you've got your GX attack, 50 damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active. So one of the, it's really not a great GX attack. It's probably one of the worst GX attacks. But it's there if you need it. Now, I've said before, I don't think Quad Glaceon is particularly going to work. I don't think Quad Glaceon is good enough. There's going to be plenty of decks that can set up and beat it. And what Alex basically said was, yeah, good point, there is. But that's where Barbarical comes in. Now, Barbarical, not Barbaracy, that would be bad, comes in with the ability Hand Block. If you have a stadium card in play, your opponent cannot attach any special energy cards from his or her hand to his or her Pokemon. Now, I must point out at this stage, it's if you have a stadium in play, not your opponent. If your opponent's got a stadium in play, you've got to replace it with your own in order for this ability to work. Similarly, if your opponent puts down one of their stadiums, or your opponent puts down something like a field blower to get rid of your stadium, the ability goes off and they get access to their double colorless. But let's just go straight for the biggest Pokemon here, Zoroark GX. They are not going to be able to use their double colorless energy with hand block going, and Zoroark GX decks are generally built with lots of Bridget, but fewer draw supporters, because the theory is, look, I use Bridget. I set up using Bridget, and then I use Trade to get my cards for the rest of the game. Well, that doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Not if their abilities are turned off. If they can't use Trade, they've got to draw their double colorless energy the same turn. They draw a stadium, and a lot of Zoroark decks will be playing Skyfield. And a lot of Zoroark decks will be playing Field Blower. But they've got to draw them at the exact same time, as or at least in the same turn, as drawing their double colorless energy. And I'm not entirely convinced they're always going to be able to do so. And that's basically the deck. You stop them attaching special energy while just doing 90-30 and turning off all of their abilities. It works against Zoroark. Let's think about another big deck in Expanded. How about Boswell? Well, they don't have access to strong energy. And then they don't also have access to stuff like Tapu Lele in order to set up. Now, there are some other Pokemon you will need here. Tapu Lele, you still need a copy of it. It's just that good. But we also see that Alex plays a Sudowoodoo, 
and an Auron Guru. Now, Suda Wudu is in here, nice and simply, because it's got the ability Roadblock, which means your opponent cannot have more than four bench Pokemon. And this is a direct counter again to stuff like Zoroark, because it means they can fill up their bench and use Riot as beating for lots of damage. And if they've only got four bench Pokemon, it means they're only doing 100 damage a turn. Now, that will get a two-hit KO with Zoroark, but spoiler alert, we're going to be playing Rough Seas in a minute. Time you heal down, that means Zoroark is not getting a two-hit KO on Glaceon. Uh, that's not good news, ladies and gentlemen. That, that's going to go pretty downhill pretty quickly. And even against decks that aren't relying on their bench like Zoroark, people still need a bench. People still want a whole bunch of bench Pokemon. And by taking away one of their bench spots, you can really put them in an awkward position. Awkward for them, hilarious for you. And then Oranguri just draws until you've got free cards in hand. It's a nice little bit of extra consistency. Now, this deck is really reliant on abilities, so something like a Garboda here would suck. But then again, the whole point of this deck is that you're slowing down your opponent, spreading damage around. You should be able to either KO a Garboda when it comes into play or stop your opponent actually setting up. Either will do fine. Now, in terms of energy here, you've got to play four double colorless because look at the attack costs of Glaceon. And you're playing eight basic water. Now, this is slightly higher than we would usually expect. Decks like this generally tend to play maybe seven and four. The reason you play the eighth energy here is that turn one energy evolution on Eevee really is absolutely spectacular. And you've got to take advantage of it every single time that you can. You don't want to be drawing anything that stops you getting a water energy on turn one. Your turn one Glaceon is absolutely huge. Now, if we look at the supporter line for this particular deck, we see that once again, Cynthia is, is coming. Cynthia is becoming a real go-to supporter of choice here. Now, Alex did choose to play free Professor Sycamore as well as free Cynthia, and then two copies of N. But this really shows that Cynthia is coming in here. Cynthia is a card which is taking over, is becoming a staple. It's not a one-of or a card to use after rotation. Cynthia is here and Cynthia is here now, ladies and gentlemen. We also see one copy of Guzma. It's a little bit low. But in theory, you don't need to play around with your opponent's bench so much because you're stopping their bench with Sudu Wudu. You're stopping their double colorless with Barbarical. You're stopping their abilities with Glaceon, or at least their EX and GX abilities. Remember that non-GX abilities like Octillery will work fine even when there is a Glaceon out. Point being... You don't need to use stuff like Guzma as much because your opponent isn't setting up as often to the point where you need to use something like Guzma to slow them down. We do, however, see one copy of Getsis, and this is one big reason Tapu Lele's in the deck. Getsis forces your opponent to take all of their item cards and shuffle them back into their deck while allowing you to draw that number of cards. Now, imagine this scenario turn one. You go first on turn one. You shuffle all of their item cards back into their deck using Getsis. Then you get a turn one Glaceon. So they start with no items and no GX abilities. That is going to be a start from which most decks just can't recover. And it's kind of hilarious. Also one copy of Team Flare Grunt here. Because, you know, getting rid of energy. Always good. Of course, being the expanded format, we do have Versus Seeker. So things like your one Guzma actually could be potentially five Guzma. But do remember, ladies and gentlemen, that it's still not going to be a primary focus of the deck. You are going for disruption here. And the more you disrupt, the less you need to play Guzma. Now, if we look at the list as a whole, here it is. There are a few extra cards. We've got four Ultra Ball because Ultra Ball is the best Pokemon search that we've got at the moment. We see four Enhanced Hammer because, of course, stopping them attaching special energy is nice. 
But maybe they end up getting a couple special energy on. You don't have a stadium, they get a Garboda, etc. Well, Enhanced Tamamese, means you get rid of them. And these decks that rely on special energy, and at the moment, a lot of decks in Expanded really do rely on special energy. With the combination of Barbarical and 4 Enhanced Hammer, they're just not keeping those energy on the field. One Rescue Stretcher, just because it's nice to recover your Pokemon. Computer Search is the A spec of choice. The rule is very simple. You've got Dowsing Machine, which is good if you need to use resources that you can't play enough of. And you use Computer Search if you need to get set up quickly. This is a deck that sets up and then wins by attacking and not doing a huge amount of damage, but enough because you've not set up. Well, you need to set up. That's where Computer Search comes in. We see four Rough Seas as our stadium of choice. Obviously, we need to play a bunch of stadiums so Barbarical can work. And like I said, with Glaceon, healing 30 per turn really does help the maths work out and stop your opponent getting KOs. And then the full four copies of Floatstone. Now, partly this is so you can retreat your Glaceon while they heal with Rough Seas. Retreat, heal for a few turns, repeat till Fade. But also, you need the turn one Glaceon. So maybe you start with uh, Tapu Lele, Sudo Wudu, etc. You need to be able to retreat it, but you can't use an energy to retreat because you need to use an energy to attach to Eevee to evolve. That's why you need to play 4 Floatstone here. Because if you play 4 Floatstone, you massively increase your chances of being able to get that turn 1 Glaceon, and that's how you win the game. I love this deck, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's brilliant, I think it's innovative, and it uses a card that a month ago I said was underplayed. Go Wossy! Go Wossy, etc. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this deck. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but remember the rule. Please be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far, the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.